Hello, Algebra 2. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Um, today we are moving on to 4.6, which um, is focuses on the natural base, um, or E, um, and the natural log. Um, because you don't really know what E is, and I told you to just accept it for what it is right now. So we're going to talk more about what it is and what it's useful for. Um, so, properties of the natural exponential function E. Okay, so the, um, uh, the natural base, or E, is the most common base in exponential functions. It is denoted as the letter E. And you're going to be seeing a lot of E's, so get used to it. Um, so we've already been working with them um, a little bit, so I just, we're going to keep working with them um, and hopefully make it so it's a little more comfortable for you. Um, all right, so characteristics of E. E is named, the number E is named after the man who discovered it, whose name is Euler. Spelled, okay, yes, it is Euler, pronounced O-I-L-E-R, but that's not how you write it. It's written E-U-L-E-R. Here's Euler. Okay, so um, he like really contributed a lot to math. Um, so if you're interested in like the history of mathematics, this guy is somebody you should look into because he's kind of discovered a lot of really, really cool things. One of which is Euler's number, or E. Okay. So E is an irrational number, um, and it's approximately 2.718, which we've already covered. Okay, and I'm going to introduce something totally new to you, probably. Um, but E is defined as the value of the following expression. Okay, so this notation just means the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the n. And basically all that means is as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this thing here, this value, gets closer and closer to e. Okay, so if you take a look um, at the following table, so what I have here is 1 plus 1 over n to the n, right, which is the expression that we're talking about here, 1 plus 1 over n to the n, and for different values of n. So when I plug in 1 for n, I have 1 plus 1 over 1 raised to the first. So that is 1 plus 1 raised to the first, which is 2. Um, so when I plug in n equals 1, I get out 2. When I plug in 2, that's 1 plus a half, so 1.5, raised to the 2. Okay, and that's 2.25. And so as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, so when n is 10, it's 2.59. When it's 100, it's 2.708. Or eight. And as we get larger and larger values of n, this value, if you were to plug it into your calculator, gets closer and closer and closer to the true value of e. So essentially, when n is infinity, then 1 plus 1 over n to the n equals e, right? Obviously, you can never equal infinity, and so this can never actually equal e. Right? But that's why it's irrational. That's why we have an expression um, to express it, like a you know, little e. Fun fact, Euler also um, introduced slash invented the idea and the notation of a function. So f of x, every time you use f of x, that was Euler too. OK, <laughs> so the domain of e to the x, um, so if you, know, you let the function f of x equal e to the x, it's just a normal exponential function, except your base, instead of being 2 or 3, is 2.71828, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so your domain, if you're going to look at the graph, right? So the blue is y equals 3 to the x, and the green is y equals 2 to the x. And then if you notice, e to the x, which is 2.7, so it should be in between 2 and 3, right? 2 to the x and 3 to the x um, is. And it's closer to 3 to the x than it is 2 to the x because 2.7 is closer to 3. <sighs> okay, so it's, it's still just an exponential function, right? So its domain is negative infinity to infinity, and its range is 0 to positive infinity, um, just like all other exponential functions. It goes through 0, 1, just like all other exponential functions. It goes through the point 1, comma, e, so, yeah. Okay, so there you have it. Um, so there's an E button on the calculator. 
So here's my graphing calculator, and I have, there's actually two E buttons. There is um, this one here that says E to the X, and then there's also a little tiny E as well, which I'm trying to find. Okay, so your little E is above the division sign. Um, little E is there. Um, it's right under where pi is. Okay, so here's E. So if I just click E, so second, the division symbol, it gives me what the value of E is, 2.718. Now the E to the X button gives me E, and it immediately gives it a power. So, I mean, so if I want to do like E to the fifth, I can do that. But I can also figure out E to the fifth by using the other one, E raised to the fifth power. And I still get the same answer. I don't know why they have both. Maybe they just wanted to put an extra button on the calculator to make it symmetric or something. I, don't, I have no idea. You can look it up if you're curious. Okay, just like we've used transformations in the past, you can use transformations to graph the natural log, or sorry, the natural um, exponential function. So um, if we know that e to the x looks like, you know, it's got your asymptote at the x-axis, and it goes through the point 0, comma, 1, and it goes through the point 1, comma, 2.7, right? That's e to the x. So then I can take e to the x, and minus 3 moves it down 3. So all that does is it changes that point that was um, 0, 1. That moves down 3, so 1, 2, 3, down to negative 2. So it goes through the y-axis at negative 2. And the asymptote, which was at um, the x-axis, is now down at negative 3. Okay. Um, but it still looks pretty much the same. right? It's just shifted down 3 units. Okay. Um, you can try the next two. g of x is e to the x plus 2 plus 1. Um, the h is e to the x minus 2, where the minus 2 is in the exponent, and then the other one's negative e to the x. So go ahead, try to describe the transformation and graph it. Just kind of, you know, same transformation stuff we've been doing since day one. So example two, this is just applied to the x, so it's horizontal and it's opposite of what you think. So it's left two. The plus one is up one, so this should be your graph. Um, h of x just has the x minus 2. Um, the minus 2 only affects x, so it's right 2, um, horizontal. So I just took that point um, 0, 1, and I moved it over two spots, and then I just kind of you know, kept my asymptote the same. And then uh, example 4 is reflect over the x-axis. Um, your asymptote doesn't change in that case, and uh, it goes through the point 0, negative 1. Okay, before we go into continuous compound interest, I wanted to talk about what compound interest is in general. Um, so we already talked about simple interest, and sim simple interest is like you borrow money from someone, a credit card company, and they only charge you interest on the money that you borrowed. So um, if you borrowed $100 and they have 10% interest, then it's $10 per year or per month, however often that they accumulate um, the interest, right? However, compound interest is when you have to pay interest on the interest as well. So you borrow $100, and then the next year you have $110 that you're owed. And so then you're paying money, you're paying interest on $110 for the following year. So rather than um, so you add $10 the first year, and then the second year you add $11. So you would then owe $121. And then the next year you add $12.10, right? So 10% of um, whatever your amount is, right? So compound interest accumulates more quickly than simple interest. Um, and there's a general formula for compound interest, which we haven't really talked about, because the other thing is too, this way that I'm talking about is only if it compounds annually. So every year they charge you something, you know, they charge you the 
Um, but they could charge you that 10% every quarter of a year or every third of a year or every month or every day. Um, so it just kind of depends on the situation. So the following is the formula for compound interest. Okay, so compound interest is a of t equals p times 1 plus r over n raised to the nt, where a of t is the amount owed after t time, p is the principal or the amount that you borrow or the amount that you invest, depending on what kind of interest it is, and then r is the rate of interest, so if it's a 10% interest rate, that's 0.1. Um, and then n is the number of times per year the interest is compounded. Um, if we're talking, you know, units, n is the number of times per year the interest is compounded, then t has to be um, in years. Okay, so you have to be really consistent and careful with your units. Um, okay, so something to connect to past formulas that we've used. If n is 1, what does that mean? That means you compound one time per year, okay? And then the formula just turns into P times one plus R over one, which is just R, raised to the one times T. Well, A equals P times one plus R to the T. That was our formula that we used before, before we learned about other compound interest and that you can compound it more than once per year. So. This you've seen before. This is the more complex version. Okay, so here's the thing. I can compound interest four times a year or 12 times a year, right, once a month. Or I could do it every day, 365 times. So then this would be 365 and this would be 365. Um, I could do it every minute or every second. And when you get down to instantaneous compound interest, that is um, what we call continuous compound interest, which is the formula um, with continuous compound interest. And here's, here's the interesting thing, right? So if you remember what E is, E is um, the limit as N gets really, really big, right? So when, um, of one over one plus N to the N, right? And if you look at our compound interest formula, that's uh, your principal um, times 1 plus r over n to the n times t. And so um, if you notice, if I were to remove the r and just put a 1 there and remove the t, I would have this formula, 1 over 1 plus n to the n. Um, and so what happens is when n gets to infinity, this whole thing turns into e. Okay? So kind of a cool uh, connection there. So um, your continuous compound interest is um, A, your, the amount um, of money over a certain amount of time is equal to the original, the principal, right, the original amount that you invest um, or borrow times E raised to the R times T, where T is the total, or A of T is the total amount after two years, P is your principal, R is your rate of interest, and T is your time in the number of years. Okay, so you also have um, exponential growth and decay models, um, and so if we're talking about population growth, um, you're going to have a positive value uh, for R, and if you have decay, then you're um, value of R is going to be negative because you're raising E to a negative power, which actually makes it decay rather than um, grow. Okay, so your population growth, um, and actually this is the same, like radioactive decay um, or exponential growth of um, something other than a population will also follow this form. Um, and it's just that A of T equals A0 times E to the KT, um, where A of T is the population or amount after a certain amount of time, and A0 is the initial population or the initial amount. Um, it's a constant, just a number. K is a growth rate, so K can be positive if it's growth, or K is negative if it's decay, um, and then T is time. So note that these two formulas are exactly the same, right? P is my starting amount, A0 is my starting amount, E to the KT 
R is a rate, K is a rate, same thing. 